Well, the University of Melbourne has over 30 cultural collections that go right back to our early days in the um, 1850s. This university is quite unique in having so many wonderful cultural collections. Many of them are based in the Bailey Library. In fact, about 11 of the 30 or so that the university has are essentially library-based collections. There are a number of others which aren't, and they sit in faculties, often connected to teaching, often have very strong discipline connections. So, For example, we've taught architecture at this university for a very long time and we have the papers of some of the early architectural firms here in Melbourne, including the, um, the drawings, the original drawings of the Royal Exhibition Buildings. The Dental Museum um, is actually based on Swanson Street, it's part of the dental school and um, it has a wonderful collection of about two and a half thousand items. The museum does tell the story of the teaching of dentistry at Melbourne so it replicates um, how dentistry was taught in Victoria but also how the profession has developed in Victoria since the mid-colonial times. Some of the other collections that we have also include Granger Museum which is a biographical museum which has a vast collection about Percy Granger, a foremost Australian composer and pianist. The Zoology Museum sits within the Department of Zoology. It's very much involved with the teaching of zoology and there's a terrific research um, opportunities within the collection. The collection numbers about 3,000 animal species right across the animal kingdom. There are some very rare species in that museum and included amongst them is the four metre long moa skeleton. The herbarium is vast, there are about 100,000 specimens, but some of the very early um, specimens date from the 1770s, and two in fact were collected by Sir Joseph Banks on his voyages with Cook on the eastern coast of Australia. Um, one comes from 1717, one from 1776, they're daisy specimens. Very rare and very special parts of the herbarium's collection. The Potter Museum is located on Swanson Street and it's one of the um, few university museums that actually um, is public facing and it forms a, a gateway to the university. It has a wonderful collection of um, both historic and contemporary art, um, objects, sculptures, works on paper. Um, the Classics and Archaeology collection is a subset of the Potter collection and that in itself is a truly marvellous um, component of that collection. We have an extensive print collection and that includes some wonderful originals of um, people like Rembrandt, Dürer, Da Vinci, which are rather special and, and quite often unknown that we have them. The majority of those um, were given to us at the same time as some of our rare books. I think one of the most important items in our collections is one of our newest items, and that is we recently purchased a fragment from the Gutenberg Bible. And why I think that's important is that the Gutenberg Bible it was the first printed book in history. It's miraculous that some of these items are in such good condition. The beautiful colours in some of the illuminated manuscripts are still as bright and vibrant today as they were in the Middle Ages. The, the things in, that are in our collections aren't just sitting there dominantly in the dark. Uh, we have a digitisation centre in the university with some um, pretty special high-end equipment and the university itself in our information um, strategy uh, has articulated that we really, in, as part of our public engagement, are keen to um, expose the treasures that we have and make them available. Universities take their roles very seriously in maintaining, preserving, providing access to some of these fabulous resources that they have in their care. People trust universities. Universities have been here for centuries and people know that um, those materials will be um, safeguarded and, and taken seriously and preserved uh, into the future.